Okay, so now we're going to go into the database implementation of the SBA. This is the practical. Now, as I told you all, I'm not going to show you all of the skills and everything that you have to do for the database. What I'm going to be focusing on is a lot of the things that you need to know to make sure you get your marks and the things that you should have inside. You pretty end up the database and putting in pictures and colors and all that kind of stuff. That's up to you. You could figure out how to do that. But I'm just going to show you the things that will get to the marks that are necessary for your database. Everything else is up to you. It's up to you. So let's go. Now I have, um, I'll magnify the screen wherever I could so that you'll be able to see exactly where I'm at. So I have a database that I have created. And this is assuming, well, you would have gone through the normalization process and all that stuff. But when I get to, get to the next video with the documentation part, I'll show you how to put in, how you normalize the database and how you separate the tables and then show you how to put print screens of all the things that we're doing. But this is just a practical application. And again, I'm letting you know, this is not a full, full, full solution. It's basically just guiding you through what the syllabus is going to be looking for. So let me go and get the syllabus first for you. Information technology. All right, so for our syllabus, um, what you want to get is the implementation of the database. You must have, well, for all, for all the solutions, you must have appropriate use of all the IT tools, which means you have to include certain things in the database, such as like um, relationships, putting in a password, all that stuff. Then you must have a human computer interface, which means it must be logical and well labeled, which I'll show you how to do that too. Appropriate use of features and tools in the database. You have queries, reports, forms. Those are things that we want to make sure that we put inside the database. But they have some clearly defined things that you must do. Solution includes most of the relevant tables, which is one mark, meaning that you must have tables that actually solve your problem. You have appropriate relationships and integrity checks. That means you must have relationships done. Security features, you have to put in a password. Uh, most of the features work or some of the features work. The thing is, to know if most of the features work or some of the features work, it's kind of hard to know because you have to define what are the features that you want in your database to solve the problem. So what the examiner is most likely going to do, I guess, is they're going to have to look to see if the features that you say you were trying to, the thing you were trying to solve, does the database actually solve it? And it says solution implemented does solve the problem. That's two marks. So they clearly wanted to show that it solves the problem. And they also wanted to show that most of the features work. I don't know how they're checking for most of the features because there are no like functional requirements that you put inside here, like how you put in a comsci IA. So we'll figure that out, right? We'll figure that out. So this is the database that I have to solve this problem. The problem that we have with the cafeteria, right? So remember in the previous video, I kind of, um, I kind of gave you a problem definition for the database to show you what it, what problem I'm trying to solve. So I created this database with four tables and we really want to solve the problem of people being able to order things and the cafeteria keeping track of it and getting reports. So at the end of the day, I want to be able to get re reports by item, reports by student, reports by um, yeah, reports by item and student, things like that is what we're trying to do. So I have the four tables. I have an invoice table. Um, design view would have our order ID, product ID, quantity. The invoice is where we're going to actually collect the data that we want from both sides, from the from the customer, which is the student, and from the um, cafeteria, which will be the order. So that's why I have order ID and product ID as a composite key because they're both being used to relate to different sides of the database, right? There's the client side of the database and then there is the um, item side. So that's the invoice table, then there's the items table. The items table is basically going to have the item ID and whatever you're selling and then the cost. Then I have the orders table, which will have the order ID and the customer who was making that order. And then I have the student, which will have a student ID, their name and the order that they're making. So the order will basically assign one order to a student. 
how that how that relates now is in the relationships so when you set up the relationships what you want to do is you want to set up your relationships based on your solution now your teacher is supposed to guide you on how to create the tables for your database because this is a custom database solution it's not a, a pre-made solution so you're going to have to get guidance from your teacher on the table that you should have how they should relate to each other but you should be able to at least come up with the basic concept and when it comes to doing the relationships your teacher should help you if your teacher doesn't help you well this 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 is not going to help you because i'm not teaching the actual database implementation concepts right now i'm just showing you what it should look like when you do your eye right so the relationships i have here the students um student relates to the orders table so the customer id will go in here that'll be a one-to-many relationship that means one student can have many orders if they want at any point in time because that is what we want to be able to show we want to show all the orders that students have made right and then we have the um the orders table now each order is related to the order id of an invoice is a one-to-many relationship even though it's two primary keys relating to each other there's not really a primary key this is our composite key so this composite key is going to allow you to have an order and a product that will make the primary key the product that you choose will come from the items table the items table will have all the items so you could have many items inside there right so that's the relationships if you don't understand that remember my goal is not to explain how to do a database my goal is to show you what it should look like when you are doing your eye to try to get the get the marks that you need because um come i mean keep eyes they you need a teacher to help you you need a teacher to guide you or else you will you'll be lost all right so i have all those things inside and once i have those tables i would have gotten the marks so far for having including the most relevant tables there's no way that they could tell me or they could tell you that you do have the relevant tables inside there you are trying to solve the problem of the cafeteria being able to track the information about items that they are selling, which ones selling the best, which ones selling the most, all that kind of stuff. That's what you're trying to do. So you should have those four tables in. So that should be the mark, right? Er evidence of appropriate relationships and integrity checks. Once you have the relationships in and they could see, you have to prove that you have, um, when you do your print screens, you want to show the relationship type. So you double click on that there and you will see one to many. Enforce referential integrity, cascade update related fields, cascade deleted fields too, right? All those things need to be checked because you need to show that the database has some sort of integrity, right? Um, right, so back to the syllabus. What do we have inside here again? Security features included. We input in here, so I'll put that in at the end. Features working, right? So let's try to get into some of the features now. What we want to do is we want to create our orders table. Now, I already created this orders table to show you what it should look like in the end, but I'm going to show you how to create the table and make sure the subform is working. Once you do the relationships properly, once you do the relationships properly, you should get some sort of layout like this. So, our order ID here would show you the, uh, the items that are um, ordered. Because of the way I set up the relationships, the orders table relates to the items table, so you'll be able to see the order IDs that the people ha uh, have made. Same thing will happen for the student table. If I open the student table, the student table should show you what order they have, and then from the order, it will show you the products that they have also that going down. And then the product ID, well, yeah, this product ID table, not showing that, but um, it should give you this, this little plus sign. Once you see those plus signs, that means they have the ability to create a subform. A subform is very important in a database because it, it, it allows you to see the things that you need to see. So I'm going to delete this orders table here just to show you that to create, once you, once you have the relationship set up properly with the correct um, integrity, if you just go to the table that you want to create a form for, which is I want to create a table to manage the orders, right? I want to um, get our order ID and assign it to our student. So I'm going to go to the orders table and go to create and just get create form and it will give me everything with the sub form. But you realize it gives me order ID and customer. But I do just want the customer. I want the customer name also. So what do I do? I have to zoom out here for you all to see, right? It might get a little small on the screen, but at least you know what's on the screen. So I have I have I have an order. 
and if the if the cafeteria is doing this they will most likely want to see it by orders not by customer so when i have an order id here i want to be able to go in and put the customer that ordered it but the customer information here is not coming up so we're going to go into this form and design view and where i have customer i will take the this table here and make it a little smaller because i want to put in a field basically so let me just zoom out a little bit i want to take this i need to resize this this thing here if only it would resize just now design views get, get a little crazy sometimes now i'm supposed to go to design view right Right, I want to not drag that down so much. Why is it doing that? Anyhow. Right, so I'm going to take the everything and make it all smaller here. Oh, okay, now I can get each field right. So right, so the customer is going to have our customer. I why everybody doing that? Stop it. This is what I do like access for access is get real vexed like. All I want to do is edit one field. But no, everybody had to get selected. Yeah, all right, so you can figure it out and I just gonna make it wider. And I'm going to click on top here where you say add existing fields. So watch add existing fields. So I'm going to add an existing field and I'll get this thing coming up on the side. What it does is it allows you to get show all tables and I want to choose the student name so I want to put any student name so I'm going to take the name here and put it next to the customer ID all right all of this you could resize on your own time or whatnot but this means every time the name comes, the customer ID comes up, the name of the student will come up automatically. It is not going to cooperate. There's a way to stop this from like linking each field. But right now, I do have time to I do have time to find that out. Now if I go back to the design view, what we'll show you is whenever you have a customer ID here it should change to the name of the person that you actually have in the, in, the, in the database. So I'm going to prove that it works by going to add a new customer. So I'm going to create a form for the student table. So let me close this one here. Click on the student table and create a form for the student. Right, so it will give you a student, right? Now I want to add a new student just for testing purposes don't use this part here to use to do a navigation eh? you don't want to navigate like that i want to create a new student and no not this down here as well so i want to create a new student and the id for this student will be two form view sorry yeah the id for this student will be id number two and the name of it is janice and the class is one central and the order id here should be order number two i believe right and then i'll get them a new order id which will be two yeah right so now i have janice and janice is there but janice didn't really order anything so we add a new record for Janice. Close. All right. So now when I go back to the orders table, I should see that I have the ability to have a order ID for customer number one. Or the customer ID is number two. It should change to Janice, right? And Janice will change there. So that proves that something is happening. Of course, you're going to neaten this up, and the actual things that Janice orders will be different. But watch again. Watch again. This is, a, this is something that should work. This has to work because it has to show a relationship working. If I change the customer ID, 
from one, it will change to Bob. If I change the customer ID to two, it will change to Janice, right? Good. Organizing your form and design view, you have time to do that. I don't have time to do that right now because I'm showing you proof of concept to help you understand the marks, the marks. So that counts as something that is working in your database. You see that thing where it says features working? Most features work, right? So you have one of those features working, which is you have a form where you could enter order or you could enter a student, depending on your number, and it will change. Your name will change automatically. Again, your teacher is supposed to help you with this, right? Now, after that, um, what I want to do is I have two, I have two, um, two forms. I could put in a next form if I want to, but usually one form with a sub form is good enough, and then a normal form without any information is also good enough. You could put in that. What you want to do on these forms is you want to give some navigational features. So I'm going to go to design view, sorry layout view, and I'm going to put in some buttons. I want to put in a button up here called next record. So I'm going to go to next rec record operations and go to the record navigation and I could say go to next record. So I click next and what do I want to put? I want to put an arrow pointing right. And then I'm going to put next record finished. Now I have a next record button. Oh shucks, it, not, it wasn't supposed to go inside this thing, you know. Just now. Uh, yeah, it not supposed, wasn't supposed to go inside there. That was, that was real pain. Trouble. Yeah, so I'll put it outside here. This box here, like you see this dotted line around here, it's just, it's just mess up everything because it'll think that everything is linked to that form. So yeah, so I'm gonna put any button now, I'll put it on this side here. You could put your button wherever you want, right? Don't, don't let me determine where you put, put the button. Access, I doubt you just froze up on me there. Yeah, but access, it just froze up on me. Where was I? Student, student form, not student form, All right? So let's go here. Um, view, right, button, put a button on at the bottom, name it next record, no, that's not what I wanted to do, delete, insert button, Let me change it from here and change it to design view. Design view make it I'll, I'll ease up. Yeah, the button will go right there. Alright, next record. Alright, record navigation. Go to next record. Next. Arrow right. Next. Go to next record. Sorry. Next. Record. Right, so I have our next button there. And I'm gonna insert a next button. That will be for previous record. So we put this one here. We name this one, go to previous record. Next, go to previous. Previous record, right? The arrows, the arrows not exactly like the same, but what really matters is when I go to form view, Will this button go through the records that I have? Yes, I have Bob and I have Janice, okay? So once these two buttons work in, and of course you fill your database up with multiple people, you should be okay. These two buttons work in, that is features working. So you need to put these buttons on all of the forms that you have so you'll be able to go through all of the records. So aside from being able to type information in, and put in information about a student, you need to be able to go back and forth between the records I want, want to do, right? Um, there's a reason why databases are not done by much students is because database requires a lot of planning. But when it comes to designing a database, you can really do it really quickly, right? So we put in those buttons there. So all I have to do is go on the orders table and put in that same thing too, and design the form of the fields that I want to have in it. Cool, good, no problem there. 
that should be all right now the next thing that you want to have is a database must have some sort of reporting done right now it's alleged that you have to do queries um no sorry we have to do queries in the database so let's go and create a query by design so i want to create a query from the tables i have I want to find the on information about the student. I want information about the items that they ordered and how much money it costs. How do I get that? Oh, I need to put invoice quantity right here. Okay. All right. So I have three tables inside, which is the student table, the items table, and why do relationships not come? The relationships supposed to come up, eh? Just hold on, eh? Let me see why the relationship not here. Anyhow, they are there, so. Cool. all right so i want to get the information about a particular student so let's say i have a student id student id i want to check the names of the item that they have the cost and the quantity all right now by itself right now i have literally i could just run this query and it will show me all the people that have um order these things student id id number one has ordered water id number two has water also id number one has i don't know what that item is um let me save the query and <laughs> fix that <laughs> see if this is um student orders so I name it as student orders. Um, we'll just go and fix the items. So that will update. Go back my items. Why did I put this water? I don't know. Juice. Alright, juice. Juice is three dollars. Save. Close. Alright, let me save these. You know, it will change the juice now. Right, so change the juice. Good. So now I see the orders, which will be order one, order one, and um, cost and quantity, right? Now, if I could easily do a calculated query here. So instead of doing the normal query, I'll put um, total colon square brackets cost multiplied by quantity. All right, if you don't know how to do the calculated query, you're going to have to learn how to do it. Alright, so I have total this cost by quantity and now when I run this query it will show me the total for each one of these orders, right? Now, I have order ID and I have name of the item and of course I have quantity of total. If I wanted to find a total of all of the um all of the people, I don't know, let's say let's say I wanted to search for a particular ID. So if I go into the same student ID query, I could go to design view and where I have ID, I could put the criteria as square brackets, enter the ID to search for. Alright, these are things that you could do to add functionality to your database. So I'll put square brackets, enter the ID to search for any criteria. So now when I run the query, it will ask me what ID you want to search for. Let's say I search for ID 1, it will show me everybody for ID 1. And yeah. Now, you want to get about two to three queries, four queries that give you the information that will solve your problem. Now, the problem I'm trying to solve is the cafeteria wants to be able to get the information or um, amass the information about things that are selling and all that kind of stuff. So I'll probably create a query about the items sold, the names of the students, all those different things. I'll create different queries about. And this is just one example of them. However, if I were to create a report now, which is what I want to do, I want to create a report for the, do I want to save this query design for senior knowledge? Yes, I say right. So let's say I go to create a report now. So I'm going to create, so I have the basic things I normally have in a database. You have to have tables, you have to have forms, you have to have queries, and now we're going to do a report. So I want to create a report. I'm going to go to the query, the report wizard. 
So I'm going to go to Report Wizard and I'm going to use the exact query I just did. Now this is one of the things that you should be able to do. When you create a query, you should be able to use that query to make a report. I have ID, name, cost, quantity, and total. So this is going to help me to show the order ID. No, before I do this, yeah. So I'm going to go to next, yeah. Next, I will sort it by um, ID. And then I'm going to go to next. Put it in ascending order by name, I guess. Next, next. And this is going to be student order report. Because it's a because it's a report that allows you to because it's a query that allows you to type in the information. I can type in the information for the student ID I'm looking for. So I'm looking for student ID number two. What did that person order? Well, look, I put in student ID number one and it says they had juice, water, and the total is $3 and $5. Now I could go in this report and put in, um, put in totals underneath it. But if I want to keep track of a student, what, whatever they ordered, well, I just did that by creating a query and then creating a report for it, right? Um, right, so that gives your database functionality. Functionality. So you see this thing here, most features work, solution implemented does solve the problem. You want to do these little tricks. You want to do these little things with doing simple queries, doing calculated queries, and creating reports that are meaningful towards your solution. I can't emphasize that enough. Don't just create a database for creating a database sake and just have random things inside of it. You have to create a database and, have, um, and it must have meaningful things for the problem you are trying to solve. So have a student order report and all of that inside there. So that's enough of that. You could figure that out on your own. I basically gave you some insight on what you could do. Now we want to put in the navigation part of it now. So I'm going to go to create a switch board. All right, so close out this order report. Again, your teacher should help you with that. Let's get a switch board again, man. Hold on, it's this me that make the video. Yeah, this should get cut out. Um, right. So we want to go to five. Ah, no, I don't want to do that. What just happened there? Right, yeah. So we want to go to file and then we're going to go to options and current database and then you will see let me zoom in file options current database and inside there you will see display form no yeah now, if you want, you could create your own form. If your teacher like was ready for you to do that, you could. Why is switchboard not coming up here? Switchboard's supposed to come up here. A few moments later. Right, yeah, so I can't remember where to find the exact, where to find the switchboard manager, but it's somewhere there. But anyhow, anyhow tell me what you want to do. So I'm going to type switchboard manager here. Right, wherever the switchboard manager is, glad to have found it. So they will give you this thing, the switchboard manager will be able to find a switchboard for this database. Would you like to create one? Yeah, create one. Cool. Great. You create a switchboard and they'll ask you what you want to name it. Main switchboard. Yes. Okay, cool. And then we type it as make default. And when you click make default, it's going to close. And now you have switchboard items. Switchboard items is going to be the items that you have in the search board but the form for search board will look like this you could literally go and make this own this form by yourself but if you want to go by search board items you could put it so you could create a form called search board and then go and edit the form and go to design view make it like this and start to edit it and stuff 
actually, right, so I'm not going to show you how to do a search board. I'm going to create a whole new form to na for to navigate, right? No, I don't want to save the design. So I'm going to delete the search board. Because, I mean, you could make your own search board for your own. Yeah. Make your own navigation and choose our form. Again. Okay, so now we're going to try to create the navigation for this, right? Now, normally, people would use a switchboard, and it's usually one of the easiest ways to create it. But I'm going to show you all how to take your take your life up a little further and create our whole navigation form, right? So we're going to create a blank form, and we're going to go to design view, and we're going to design this blank form. And this blank form, we're going to and put stuff inside of it. So I'm going to put text on top. And I'm going to name this um, school, school Database. Right, so I put it with the text School Database because I can. Yeah, no problem. And School Database is going to be there. And now I'm going to put buttons. So I'm going to put one button. And this button here is going to navigate to the different parts. So I'm going to go to Form Operations and choose open a form what form do i want to open i want to open the orders form open the form and show all the records yes next and the picture will be um, ms access form you can change the picture if you want and you can click browse and literally choose any picture from your computer that you feel like choosing but don't no right now we don't have time for that so i'm going to click next and i'm going to name this one open open orders form and click finish so that will be there and of course I'll have to put some text next to it so I'm going to put the text to say view orders form All right I should line this up somewhere up like this cool and then I'm going to repeat the process and add a next button for view form operations. Open a form and now I'll choose student. Next, next, student form. Finish. And I'm going to put the text for, what's the error message here? Yes, I'll label and not associate with the control label. Text box. Um, no, I did not say that. Yeah, don't worry about this label thing that now associated with the control. It will still come up. Open student form. Alright, good. So if I go to the, the design view, you will see that I have for any form view. If I have open orders form, hello, the orders form will open. If I go back to this form that I have form on open student form, oh, the student form will open. You can put pictures in if you want. If you feel like you want to be cool and make the picture big and the user interface could look really nice and all that kind of stuff. So I'll just give you all a really, really short sample of um, a name in this navigation, right? So I have the form called navigation open. I'll open any form in design view, right? So let's say I do like this image here. I click on it and on your right hand side, I will see property sheet. You could click property sheet and you could put in the picture, right? So you see picture, where you see image. Click on the tree dots there and you could browse for images that you want to use. Yeah, all, all sorts of images you have inside here. But if you're really, if you're really wild and you like want to go hard, you could go to, um, you could go and find images. Um, I don't know if they, I think they will show you JPEGs or no, it had to be a BMP file. Yeah, it had to be a bitmap file. Yeah, don't, don't fight up with that too much. It'll be a BMP file. If you want, you can go and find a, a BMP file and put it in. But as it stands right now, I have the stuff that is necessary there. So those are two forms I could open, as I said. 
you could Google how to put pictures in the background and knit, knit up and all that stuff. Next thing that you want to do, you want to be able to open up your queries or you open up your reports. Now, most of the time, you don't need to open up your query because your query is for you to see in the background. What you want to do is to be able to open up a report. So you'll get up a button in and you'll name this button Report Operations. You want to open a report. The report that I want to open is the student order report. This is the one I'll pop up asking for the student ID. So I'm going to put in a magnifying glass which yeah, and then student order report. So what should happen theoretically on oh, no, I need to put any text. So I'm going to put any text right here. Student order report. Right. Right, what should happen theoretically when I open this now, it should be this page here will come up. School database, right? I can make the font bigger, I can make it smaller. Yeah, you all get the point by now. When I click student order report, ah, it will ask me which student I want to look for. So somebody comes to the um, cafeteria and they ask, um, can I get a report on student number one? Well, look at that. I put in student number one and boom, I get the student order report for that student. And that is functionality that you want to put in. You could do that for any amount of reports that you want and usually your database should have a lot of reports and be able to open them and they should be like editable they should be able to search for a record put in a record those sort of things and that will make sure that there is no way that they can't give you most features work and so solution implemented does solve the problem because you need to prove that it does solve the, pro solve the problem when we get to the print screens, I'm going to show you some of the print screens that I have to put in. I will meet all of these requirements here to show that you actually did solve the problem because if you do solve the problem, the examiners will be like, well, it's nice that you built a database, but you are not really solve any problem that you set out to solve. So that's that. The only thing we have to do again now is put in some security features. The security features that we're going to put in is a password. So how do you password protect the database? Well, it's simple. To password protect the database, you go to File, you go to Options, and you will see... Oh, wait. Hold on. I forgot one thing. When you do the database and you have the form called Navigation, you have to put the display form as Navigation as the first form. That way, as soon as you open up the database, it will automatically go to the Navigation form. So... That way when you open it up, the first thing you'll see is navigation. You wouldn't see all the tables and all that stuff on the left hand side. Okay, so now let's go to password protect. Alright, what you want to do when you're doing your password protection of your access databases, first thing make a copy of the whole one <laughs> make a copy right um right make a copy of the database so you go to where's this database save wow it's named database 2 anyhow all right so i want to go by file and um you will see it right here literally has encrypt with password you click encrypt with password and actually you must have the database open for, ex um, for exclusive use to set or remove the database password. I remember that. So, all right, let me get it open exclusive use. Yes, do I want to save changes? Yes, so let me get the database. Documents. Um, what did I name this? Database 2. That's what I was just working on, right? So you have to right click on it and choose oh uh -huh. you have to open up access all right so you open up microsoft access let's see if i can do it to the same one file and then click open and then i want to browse And then I'm looking for database 2, which I didn't name it, right? And then I want to choose open exclusive. So you see this right here? Open exclusive. There'll be a drop down arrow. Open exclusive. When you choose open exclusive, it will open up in exclusive mode. How do you know it's open in exclusive mode? 
when you go to create the encrypted password, it will not give you the error message, right? So they will ask you for a password and you put in the password as school. And I click OK, school, school. Yeah, thanks, I appreciate it. And now, magically, when I try to open my database, you will see, it will ask me for a password. I put in the password, boom, database opens, and it opens exactly on the form that I wanted to because I went to file, and I made sure I put the options as the first form that should open the navigation form. Okay, um, yeah. So if you're bored, if you're real bored, and you want to change the, you know, insert image, so I could insert an image, find a, um, a final logo, right? So I could click here, insert image, and boom, yeah, I could put an image on my database like that. All right, that just approved data. You could print images if you want to. I mean, you could, depending on what you need to do. And I'll be in me informed there. People come here, they see this navigation form, they'll be able to go back and forth. Now, there's one thing that I didn't do yet, which I need to make sure that you all have. Inside your other forms, you must be able to go back to the switchboard. Must be able to go back to the switchboard. So let me go to the student one. Student one, I have the forward record and the back record. Of course, you could put in text, right? So I'm going to go to the design view and I'm going to insert a button here to be able to go back to the switchboard. So uh, choose inform operations, go to a uh, form, open a form, and the form that I want to go to is the navigation form. So I'll name this navigation form. Back to navigation. This is very important because this shows that you know how to navigate the database. So you'll put the words here. Back to home. Back to home. Alright, of course, my implementation is very rough because I am just trying to get you to see the things that you need to put in. No, don't go quite there. Okay, I'll just put this here and put that there. Alright, so what you will see now when I. Oh Lord. I hate you, you know, access. Access is getting real back sometimes. Alright. Stop it. Microsoft Access. Behave. Listen to what I say. Alright, back to home. Can yeah, you just leave it like that for now, right? Because I don't have time to fight it now. Alright, you see that back to home button there? When I click it, it's going to go back to the navigation screen. Alright, now there's a way that when you click it, it will be able to close one time, but I'll leave you to Google that if you want to. It'll go back to the navigation screen, and that is your navigation marks there. So once you have all those things in, you have what you need for your database. We have a solution that includes most of the relevant tables. I have all the tables. I'll show you how I created it there. But remember, you creating your tables is something that I teach everyone and have to help you to do. Evidence of appropriate relationships and integrity checks. I showed you the relationships. Um, security features added. We just put in the password. Most features work. Yes, we're able to add records. Um, we had forms to be able to add records, we'll be able to show things, we'll be able to do queries and reports. Those are things you should be able to do. And then um, implement it does solve the problem. You have to show that you actually solve the problem by the reports that you create for the database. Most times it's the reports you create. Other than that, using the IT tools, we use all kinds of tools inside Access, so we just have to prove that. Human computer interface, is it logical and user-friendly? Well, mine are user-friendly, but it is logical because they can go back and forth and um, appropriate use of tools, those are there. So these are things that you want to do in your actual solution. Now it is alleged that they don't open up your database and actually mark it and actually look at it. I don't know if that's the case, but I know you have to upload the database. So you have to upload the working database so that they'll be able to get into it, tell them the password. So if by chance they do actually check your database to see if it matches, it's cool. But from what I heard, they don't actually look at your physical database, they look at your print screens more than anything. So we have to make sure that the print screens that we put in the PDF are clear cut and without any doubt. So that's what we're going to be focusing on in the next video, 
next video i'm going to show you how to lay out your solution to show and prove that you have done what you said you would do or what your solution said that you would do so we'll have to prove that this database actually works so that'll be the next video so look out for that and remember mine my my database here is not a sample database it's just a guide us to show you things that you should do for your marks so see you all in the next video right cool thanks for watching the video i hope it helped you a lot remember there are multiple videos that go through each different part of the ia in detail so if you want a particular part that you're looking for you can check the playlist the playlist link will be in the bottom here if you use any app you can check in the app and you will see the playlist for it also to show you all the parts that are necessary if you're looking for quality information technology and computer science classes at the cape level you can check us out make it simple tt at 1-868-308-8799 or you can check us online at make it simple tt.com for slash register and use all of our free resources but if you're looking for a class that has recordings and explanations for every single thing that you need to do in the whole syllabus, you can check us out.